All right, it's that time. What time is it, Chris? Boy, am I glad you asked. Here we are. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome to the old uh, streamer Rooney. Before I get correct a let me just throw this down. Let me just throw this hot idea down in the dirt, huh? If you've got a one-page comic idea that you can put in one or two sentences, put it here in the chat or in the comments section below the video. Just in case you don't get the chance to come and hang out with us while we're having some fun, you can still have some fun after. Big exciting news today, folks. We're over 100. We're over 100 of these one-page comic suggestions since uh, the start of this year. That's great. So that's kind of exciting news. Uh, I've got today's page posted up there, but I'm going to pop that out of the way because we... Uh, we got to get to the important stuff at the very beginning here, and that is sponsors. Where's the monkey? That's a monkey. Okay. That's my Brack monkey, buddy. Hey, buddy. It's Brack. Uh-oh. All right. So today's episode is sponsored, as usual, by Bob's House of Fish. We stay open late for the halibut. Come on down to... 201 Dundas Street in beautiful downtown London, Ontario. If you want to just plop yourself down and try to reel in a hell of a bite, Bob's House of Fish is the place to do it. And our other sponsors are Fake Explosion, Fake Bands, Real Music. In fact, we've got a special feature for today. We've got a featured album from Fake Explosion. It's the latest offering, it's Jose Cabrera's Constipation. This album's rock solid all around the block. It includes such songs as Forbidden Foreplay, Cherries in the Snow, New York to L.A., and the thing that we're all here together with, Constipation. Get a listen, folks. You're not going to regret it. Links can be found at the Fixplosion site. All right. All right, let's get cracking. It's pretty cool having sponsors. I like that a lot. Yep. We've been uh, over 100. Just back to business. We've been over 100 uh, one-page comic suggestions. And, uh, you know, I put a little tagline at the top of the page today. I've been out dumbing ideas from other people in style. That's that's how I look at my uh, my perspective on this. All right. Brace yourself. Here I come. Look out. Hey, look out. Who's this guy? Okay. Yeah, this is my Brack monkey today. You got to shake it up. You can't just always have the same monkey. You want the unimpressed monkey or the clapping monkey? Here, we'll move Brack. Got too many things in my darn thing. I should call it Brack. Not, hey, buddy. We got our unimpressed monkey or we got our clapping monkey. Pick a monkey. Yeah, no monkeys for now. Okay, so yesterday's suggestion was a fun one. <laughs> unimpressed monkey. <laughs> Jim is all about the unimpressed monkey. Okay. I'm just going to star that. I'm going to put it up on the screen. Jim Lujan, unimpressed monkey. This is, you know, when people have uh, up in the stream yard, when you're having conversations with other people and they'll put their name down and underneath their name, they'll have what they're responsible for or how they want to be addressed because the creator of, you know, Jim's got a wrench or whatever their book is. Jim Luan, unimpressed monkey. You can use that. You're welcome. Okay. So uh, yesterday's suggestion was scratch and sniff denominations of currency. And the person that uh, suggested that wants to be uh, anonymous so badly, they've, they've taken that name twice. Anonymous, anonymous. Hey, there we go. <laughs> that might be the sweetest thing I've ever heard. You know what? I'm just going to have to give you one of these, though, because that hurts my feels. I got some feels. I can give a little bit of hay now. That's just a little bit of hay now there. Hey, now. Slow it down. That's, the, that's, the, that's what you get if you've been bad, kids. Get a hey now. Hey now. If you're good, you might get a poly. But I'm going to give the polys, polys out sparingly. I don't want to just go willy-nilly flinging poly all over the place. Insert thoughts here. So, 
Okay, so yesterday's page is uh, what's it worth? There's a couple of connotations in this. It's not just, uh, you know, talking about the currency aspect, but is it worth it for hairdressers to have to sit through this Senate sort of inane mental battle that uh, people tend to spell out? It's either you tell them every piece of your life story. I've seen people do that. Or you just talk about the most inane things. Guess which one I am? Oh, I've still got the insane people up. Well, I think I just answered it. Uh, oh, hey. Uh, today I'm listening to Songs in the Key of Life. You get to pick the next one-page comic for uh, tomorrow if you can tell me whose album that is. Does that sound like fun? I think that's what we'll do from now on. If people can figure out the missing piece of reality in Christopher's head for the moment, whatever name I can't remember, or just a skill testing question, then uh, I'll let them pick the one-page comic for the next day. Okay, Monday's page was episode 665 of Creation Flickers. And uh, that was a two-page piece, so that uh, I let that cover Sunday, Monday. Yes, yes. And then today's uh, today's page is what it's worth. The originals. Uh, pardon me. Well, I got bored last night, so what I did was uh, originally I just drew this with uh, green pencil and a blue piece of heavy cardstock, and uh, and then after I got home from the comic jam last night, I uh, somebody had left behind. This lovely little soldier, huh? What? Hey, check me out. And uh, so I started to play with it. Yeah, I had fun with that. So and then I realized I should get to work and just finish this thing off. Well, hell, why don't I put it in there? That's my thought process, folks. It's not too elaborate. There's, uh, I don't, I get a thing about scratch and sniff denominations, and I immediately think hairstylist. So just don't look for a deeper resonating logic here. That's going in the pile. I got to get a sound of glass smashing for when I throw things in the pile. I checked. My blood sugar is normal right now. So this is just the natural setting for weird. Um, so we've got a couple things for today. Uh, I've got three words pulled by Didi last week that I still haven't done yet. And uh, let's get the book. All right, so uh, yeah, we gotta we gotta check this guy off. Goodbye. Now we've got seven characters in a pit of fear. Bella Lugosi singing rock. Um, mouse holding. Uh, bike symbol T. What do I do with bike symbol T? Um, that's my three prompt words. Before I've had well, the last one I had was um, devil seagull coral and we did that page with the uh the little devil riding the seagulls back and then uh, he gets flung off and they found him they find him dead in a coral reef mm. it's a sad sad story unless you don't like the devil uh oh little spoiler alert there for a moment okay so uh we're caught up 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 see there we are coral demon seagull demon it was demon not devil I messed up. And Richard Simmons did that. Barney and Rehab. Good Lord. I'm getting some suggestions here, folks. Uh, there's some more coming up. I've got uh, uh, Corey Kerr is a ball in a Rube Goldberg machine. That's Gary. And then uh, Corey, in response, has actually got Jim and Gary's uh, next top five. And he lets me choose what that is, which is probably bad for you guys. And, uh, and then Chris Reamer suggested last night, me versus evil me. And how would that come together on a comic page? I, I was thinking about that immediately. I thought, well, I wouldn't finish a comic page. I'd keep myself from doing it. Don't do it. Put the pencil down. No. So we got some choices. We can do uh, um, Bella Lugosi singing rock. We can, we can do the three prompts, bike symbol T, or we can do, uh, what else was, there was something else I said. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Mermaid Unicorn Fence, we did that. Kangaroo Airplane Pyramid, we've done a few of these now. This will be number four. Jurassic Park with Giant Sloths, Matrix with Sloths. I'm going to space the sloth stuff out. Uh, yeah, so let's do... Let's do our prompts. Bike symbol T. Might as well. Prompt a week. Why not? It'd be a month worth of prompts. So this show is like Mr. Rogers for insane people. Yeah, I like that. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day for a neighbor. I haven't put my slippers on. I even I even put these on when I sit down at my desk. So there might be some truth to this. But uh, I'll, I'll let you in on a secret. I can't find cardigans in my size. So we can't go all in on it. What I wouldn't give for a three extra large, tall, red cardigan. I change my shoes and sing songs and put my feet in the pool outside with friends. It'd be great. Okay, there's our three prompts for today. Anybody have any particular way that I should be working today? Has anybody got any thoughts? Because I'm so wide open. You can throw me the ball. I disappoint myself a little bit with that one. Hey, let's get crazy. Let's get let's get nuts. You want to get nuts? Yellow. When's the last time we did a yellow one? Halfway there. Okay. Bike symbol T. Um, we're gonna have to dig into our supply cache over here. Getting a tape out. What's he gonna do with the tape? Come on. I gotta check for something. Just a second. Come on. I'm looking for posters. Found him. Bingo. We got him. It's okay. We're all okay. We got it. Okay. Where are we at? Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the music man himself, Jose Cabrera. We just promoted his new album that's coming out from Fake Explosion. I hope you watch that, uh, Jose. Welcome aboard. Okay, so we're going to get crafty. What that paper do to you, Christopher? So uh, today's suggestions, bike symbol T. And uh, with bike symbol T is some suggestions. That gives us a million different story ideas. Like a bike drinking T while playing a drum symbol. Right? Hey, hey, hey. He says thanks. Welcome aboard. Uh, we always like new faces. The, the principle is simple, Jose. It's uh, if you've got a... Here, let me put it up. I'll put up the old jargon thing here. If you've got a one-page comic idea, and you can just imagine some of the ideas I've got from people like Jim Luan. Jim gave me an idea of a horse playing a guitar, riding a bicycle on top of a fourth-dimensional parallax. Yeah, he did that. He really did that to me. I'm st I'm recovering. I'll be okay. I'll be okay, we're all not together. So if you've got an idea like that, let us know. We'll put it in the book, and then uh, get crack a lacking. We uh, we had some fun yesterday. People. Uh, uh, people were having some good times yesterday. The page that came out of yesterday is a little silly. So here's my hope, okay? With the page that I posted today, just for just for those of us that are here so far, I don't know how many that is, but 
Um, with the page I did yesterday, I put these little red squares on the page and a little note at the bottom that scratch and sniff square for a smell. There's secretly a part of me that hopes somebody does it, right? Like just on some level, there's this little part of me that says, you know, how great would that be? Somebody's going to be tempted to just reach forward and try to touch their computer screen. If it, when this goes to print, they're gonna reach forward, and try to touch the paper or concrete, whatever we print it on. So yeah, you know, it's the little things. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what my hope was. That's why I put those on there. I just, if I can just, just catch one person, just, just one who does it, then I'm happy. I will skip. I will dance. I will sing songs. I can't wait to see what suggestion Jose comes up with. Well, neither can I. <laughs> it's not like, it's not like there's a, hey, you're welcome to give us a one page uh, comic suggestion. Whenever you like. It's not like we do that. So take your time. Uh-oh. We're in trouble now. It's Rachel. Hey, Rachel. Welcome aboard. Come and sit at the back of the bus with the cool kids. Did anybody ever ride the bus that had the cool kids at the back? Anybody? Did anybody actually find one of those buses to actually exist? I'm doing a three prompt today, Rachel. That's my scheme, anyhow. All right, so. Uh, uh oh, hanging off the bumper. <laughs> Not at the back behind the bus, Rachel. Oh boy. Huh? You're going to get bad ideas to the other kids. You're going to get us all, you're going to get us grounded. I'm going to guess all granted. My mom's going to call your mom. Well. All right. So um, I'm making a mess as I usually do. You got to have some fun, shake it up, try some different things. I uh, There's a part of me that just likes pushing myself a little unnecessarily right at the beginning of things. And so if I can put down some stuff on the surface just to just to clunk it up a little bit and have to work with that because it's not this honestly isn't going to make a difference for me when it comes to putting down whatever i'm doing so the, it just tends to if you have a problem with starting it i look at it this way if you have a problem with starting a drawing or a painting or a whatever and because oh, I don't want to wreck the paper, it's nice paper, and I'm so hesitant that I'm going to make a mistake, or blah, 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 right? Let it go. Let it go. Just just get messy right off the bat. Just just kick through the door and spill your tea, huh? I find that that makes, uh, it takes all the hang-up away. And it takes all the hang-up out of you. It gets you, gets you down and dirty and disco in. Oh my goodness, am I ever going to regret this one? Well, I opened it up, didn't I? I did it to myself. All right. I did it to myself. Where's the book? Sorry. I'm not laughing at you, Philip. I've already read Rachel's response to this is why I'm laughing. That's lousy getting that beat up at the back of the bus. I had a, I had a really bad experience. There's the, the school bully. I got off the uh, bus, as did he. He was clearly having another bad day. And uh, we had never really crossed each other as yet because I just started going to that school. But uh, I, I didn't grow up very well. Surprise. And uh, so this is a city bus. And so he pushes me up against the city bus and he gives me a, a crack in the face. And uh, when you're used to getting hit, it doesn't matter, right? So when he did this, I said, is that what you got? I said, you know. And then I said a horrible thing. 
And it's the sort of thing that you shouldn't feel proud about, but you said it and it's out there now. And now you got to deal with the whole moral consequence of it. So he hits me in the face and I went, does that make you feel better? Huh? Does he like to be on the giving end instead of the receiving end like you might normally be? And he just, his face collapsed. And I realized, oops. <laughs> Whoopsie. So I felt bad. I still feel bad. I'm, in a, I'm a sensitive guy. But yeah, it's uh, frustrating for him. Anyways, so he got beat up at the back of the bus. But uh, let's just get to this right now. Rachel's going to, uh, she's going to apologize for it. So, you know, we're, that's, we're all good. We're all good. Subway Sally. <laughs> Subway Sally lived in Toronto. That's why she did it. Okay, here we go. This is my fault for asking. <laughs> Jose, his suggestion is a virtual, a virtual Flem, when I told you Jim's suggestion, it wasn't like setting a bar. It wasn't setting a bar for you to leap right over. A virtual phlegm ball that lost its way to reality and forgot its lunch money. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, that sounds like tomorrow's. It's in the book. Man, that was a lot of writing. It's in the book. Okay. What was I doing? Who am I? I'm missing a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm sorry for that, folks. All right, it's in the book. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Welcome aboard. Uh, hey, y'all. My really good friend, Jose Cabrera, is joining us today for the first time. He's an amazing artist. I get it. He's an amazing artist. Check out his workout. Um, I started checking it out last night on Instagram. There's, uh, I think it's the art of Jose Cabrera and other. There's another one. And I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the name of it. Jim, if you can put both those down, please. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoy it. It's good work. Really good work. Rachel likes it. Uh, Philip says he grew up in London. It was a rough place. London. It was rough if you grew up in uh, King Edward, but uh, or the courts, or Limberlost, or Bully. Other than that, you're fine. But one of the kids from Bully probably beat you up, Philip. Uh, yeah, and more buses. More buses for more damage. No, I got beat up by kids at the back of the buses. Just... <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hold on. Here it comes. You didn't get one. Hey, now, Philip. Hey, now. You're getting talked to by Dad over the newspaper there. Hey, now. All right. I grew up on the hard streets of West Corvina. Every time, and this is how uninformed I am, okay? But every time... Jim, that you mention any place in California at all, I look at it through the lens of, yeah, so anyways, we're down on the beaches at West Corvina, as opposed to giving it any credibility for whatever neighborhood, whatever cultural, whatever the prominent ethnicity of the neighborhood is. It, every time it's surfer logic to me. Just, I'm so sheltered. I grew up on the hard streets of West Corvina. We only had one shopping mall. <laughs> Oh, you're more than welcome. Welcome aboard. Yeah. <laughs> Great prompt for next time. But make sure it's a virtual one. <laughs> yeah. Virtually. Literally. Oh, I get to use, oh, I could do a literally page. Everybody loves that term. All right. So I'm just throwing down some schmutz and, uh, Getting uh, getting it complicated for myself for no reason. No reason at all. Anybody guess my question at the start of the stream? Uh, starting album I'm listening today is Songs in the Key of Life. And I will move your next suggestion to the top of the pile if you can tell me whose album that is. Please, somebody know whose album that is. 
And if Frank says Backstreet Boys, or is it New Kids on the Block? Which one's Frank's thing? Ruffage. <laughs> you're you're on your way to earning the poly there, there, Rachel. Okay, there we go. Up and Over Publishing is the other one that's on uh, Instagram. And the Art of Jose Cabrera and Art and Over Publishing. Please check them out. You won't be disappointed. All right, so about about done here. We got uh, Canadians in the room. We got some Americans in the room. Jose, what part of the states are you in? Are you, or are you in Canada? Are you a Canuck? Are you one of these Canuckle heads? Or are you down there where Jim is? Are you a surfer? No. Maybe that should be my shtick. Maybe I should be the reverse Frank. Frank, uh, Frank, uh, Frankly, Mapleton is a friend of ours that is uh, very interested in Canada, even though he lives in Texas. And uh, that way we seem exotic. You like that, Rachel? We're exotic. Um, and uh, maybe I should be a reverse Frankly and, and uh, be obsessed with California. West, uh, West Corvina with surfboards and palm trees. I wouldn't know. Jose wins. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're in New York, right? Um, Rachel says to avoid the literally. Oh, I'm going to trigger you. Trigger. It's Covina, not Corvinia. Corvina sounds like something from Narnia. Yeah, it does. Centaurs, man. That's what you got in California. It's all about to the the junk. Um, it's it's all, all about to the back. Jose is from Yonkers. Nice. Yonkers is bonkers. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna get cracking. Um, yeah. Please, everybody, check out that. Uh, Philip, uh, I think has got an announcement tonight. Philip, no pressure if you don't. Just say, Chris, shut it. Uh, but I think that you were going to put something up and you'd said yesterday, you're going to put something up in your stream. Can we still tell people that? Corvinia is where the surfers and palm trees reside, Jim. Uh, yeah. The girl from Toronto would know. Or, you know, you're not, you're on the prairies. Man. All right. Okay. So, now that we've uh, done that creative, crafty business, post-its, they're not just for breakfast anymore. So we got bike, symbol, and tea. Of course we do. I'm going to give this a second. So we've been doing some bikes. Oh, yeah, before I get into that, before I get into this, I have got some mail. I got mail. Now, uh, I'm going to do a deeding. I've covered up where it came from, so the person's address isn't exposed. But I don't get mail, so I get excited when I get mail. I'm as giddy as a little schoolboy. Still coming. Hold on. All right. So there's a stamp swap that Diddy did on her, on her uh, stream. And so my two oldest grandkids and I, being a thousand years old, we did it uh, together. And so theirs are still sealed up for the kids to do. Uh, okay, what is... Not your bad, Philip. I'm jumping and coming on you. Don't, it's not your bad. Yep, okay. Yep, Philip is uh, pushing that back for tomorrow, folks. Everybody's pay attention to Philip's stream tomorrow. Don't watch anything he does today. No, <laughs> just, I'm just... Yeah. Okay, so anyways, so the stamp swap is you do... Um, 10 stamps. Let's see if I still got some. I don't know what I did with them. Oh, they're over here. Okay, so I carved this thing out of uh, linoleum. It's the first, uh, first stamp I made a thousand years, but uh. And then I, well, all I've got left is these test ones, but I did a picture of a, it's a picture of a monkey smelling his armpit. 
and uh, as as would be my want. And uh, so I, I stamped 10 of those. I threw a little bit of tape on those suckers and uh, did some some stamps of some some greenery in behind them. And uh, grandkids did it with me. And we put together some stuff and they stamped. They did some stamps that I helped them carve out. And we sent uh, 30 stamps as opposed to the 10 that did he ask for. We, we were overachievers. And so in exchange, you get stamps back from all the other people that take part in it. And uh, some people signed the back, some people didn't. But I, I have a question, and I wasn't sure about. This is from Becky McCauley. Nicely done, Becky. This is Peapod. Dee Dee. Hey, it's Dee Dee. Uh, that's the Campbell Soups kids. Janet. Oh, no. It's Janet. That's fantastic. Oh, uh, there's another hand carved one. Hey, it's Dee Dee again. Oh, I like these. Another Dee Dee. Oh, there's an L. Nice. Ah, it's Dee Dee. This is Allison Taylor that did this one. That's pretty crazy. Hey, there we go. Here's where we're starting getting complex. Terry Brett. And uh, so anyways, but my question is, if Dee Dee or anybody here from Dee Dee Stream or the Stamp Swap or what the politics of this whole thing are, um, Okay, so you're in St. Catharines. <laughs> so you're worldly now because you're in St. Catharines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you went overboard in a stamp swamp. Everyone was Im impressed. What? what are you talking about? I'm really enjoying these. This is from Anne. Nice. Anne Lar. I like this. You got to fold it. It's extra crafty. Lynn Matter. Lynn Matter did this. So my here's my, my question. Can I use these? Like, can I incorporate these into, that's also new, into uh, pages? Because I will incorporate these into one-page comics. Oh, cool beans. Anyways, I don't get mail much. And and this is a real rarity for me to be, oh, look at the pretty things on, uh, on the stream here. But these are super keen. And uh, is that a sign out card from a library? Oh my goodness, I haven't seen one of those. Insert date or age here, right? Wow, that's awesome. Stamped right on it. I think I showed that. This is the thing that kind of freaked me out a little bit, though. These are on vinyl or something. Or maybe it's a sticker. I don't know. But it's like it's stamped on, on plastic. And then here's another vinyl. Oh, it's a spider. And uh, that's that's pretty crazy too. So yeah, this it's just it's really impressive the, the diversity of the stamps and uh, and uh, the thing. But can I use them? Can I incorporate them and in stuff, or should I save them as is and and not violate them? <laughs> should I not violate them? But the grandkids get to open their own this weekend, so um, which is really hard for me. Because I want to open them up. But if I'm allowed to incorporate those in whatever I do, then uh, I'm going to do so. What do we got? Uh, do, 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 do. Hey, it's Didi. Hey, Didi. You can use the hand carved ones, at least yours. Okay. But store bought stamps are probably copyright. I couldn't tell you which ones are store bought. And, 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 and it's not like I wouldn't leave them alone without monkeying around with them. But yeah, if, that's, if it's not going to hurt anybody's feelings. Oh, Jim's talking to Didi. All right. You want a glue gun? Go see Didi first. <laughs> okay, so today's suggestion is the three prompts for this week. And uh, the three prompts that I got is bike once again. Well, I didn't get bike from a three prompt before. I got bike from uh, Jim Lujan's crazy suggestion. I really, you know what, as much as I'm being ridiculous about that, I uh, I really like that that page. I had a lot of fun doing that. Let me, let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, there's the page. A horse playing a guitar, riding a bike above a fourth dimensional parallax. If you look up a parallax, that's actually a parallax. 
the nerd. Yeah. And uh, I had to put a little bit of uh, reality check on this page because it, uh, woohoo. Anyhow, yeah, that was a lot of fun, that page. I had, today's page was fun too. It's, uh, has anybody ever gone off in a, in a hairdresser's shop like this? Has anybody ever sat down and just spilled your psyche out on the, <laughs> the poor hairdresser? It's just, I just want to cut your hair, man. I don't, I don't. I don't know, lady. I don't know, dude. Maybe. I mean, you could probably fight a bear. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much again for uh, for the stamp swap, Didi. It was super cool, super fun. I'm really excited to uh, to do things with those and incorporate them into a page. So. I uh, I hope nobody minds that, and if anybody wants to do that with the ones that I did, by all means, go for it. My uh, playlist has switched to eighties hair rock, and I don't know how long that's going to last. Because as soon as you get into it's the final countdown, as soon as you get into that territory, you got to reevaluate. All right. Yeah. So anybody that's joining late, please check out uh, Jose Cabrera's two pages. I got to look up the name again. Sorry, Jose. Just this is, you'll get used to it. Chris is a little bit slow on the name remembering. Up and Over Publishing and The Art of Jose Cabrera. Both of those on Instagram. Okay. So we got Bike Symbol T. Um, yeah. Moving stuff around. <laughs> is that not what you do in a hairdressing shop? That is that is why I don't go to them. <laughs> All right, here we go. Jim Luhans, random question of the day, number 637. He does this every day. So I hope people are writing these down because I think maybe we should make a book of these. Jim puts out a question and people have to answer it visually. Do you like cream cheese? If so, on what? Who says you have to put it on anything, Jim? It's a good question, everybody. Not clean answers only. <laughs> Rachel, that's a very personal question. Oh my gosh, what just happened? I got to do this for a second and I hope I don't get copyrighted. You ready? Here it comes. <laughs> I was talking to somebody who's in the stream today and we're talking about that ridiculous song and it literally just came on. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So I've already done your uh, big mountain bike uh, with the, uh, being ridden by a horse. So, you know, there's only one way to go with this and that is a, uh, a, uh, a little girl's bike. That's the way. Hey, anonymous. Psh, it's Mike. Your uh, your page is uh, posted today. That was uh, this suggestion came from uh, a guy so nice he used the same name twice. Anonymous, anonymous. That's your page, my friend. Double A Banta Baseball, anonymous, Mike. Okay, so I'm gonna do a uh, little girl spike. And uh, bike symbol T. We'll figure it out as we go. That's the, I, I usually look at it as just get started, right? Let's uh, let's shake it up. Let's do um, let's do Tour de France guys, right? Let's do Tour de France guys, France, Tour de France guys that uh, are riding little girls bikes. 
How's that sound? That's a good place to start. Yeah, Jim's laughing. It's it's the outfield. <laughs> oh, copyright violation. Yeah, get your, your cream cheese on a sesame bagel. That's that's Jim's. Uh... <laughs> Don't touch. Let's say it's cream cheese. <laughs> All right, so that's um, that's where I'm going with this. I'll do uh, I'll do Tour de France, guys, but we're gonna make them ride little girls' bikes. You got to be careful how you type things. Okay, so uh, yeah, the whole point of modulating the page surface like this is just to shake it up a little bit <laughs> i didn't do anything um mike or anybody i'm sorry anonymous the question today the random question of the day do you like cream cheese if so on what well jim wants to know a lot of personal stuff about people here maybe people want to keep that sort of business to themselves all right. Um, yeah, let's go. Didi's back. I got to take this off. Hey, these are made by David Court. David Court makes these for me. I really, uh, I like these things a lot. He makes, uh, he makes me, every time I wear one out, he makes me I wear a set out. He makes me another set. I'm on uh, my third set in uh, a lot of years so just uh you know that's my style it's my vibe yo so i pulled up uh some random image on uh the tour of farts and uh mature and uh that's what uh i'm gonna reference with but um we're gonna switch the bikes up so we're gonna have some fun with it So one of the things that I like, uh, one of the reasons that I like putting down tapes and papers and whatnot on the surface is that uh, when I get into the coloring stage, these different values kind of jump up through and uh, it makes me very happy. So we got to do overhand instead of side grip for their hands because... Uh, uh, Kids' bicycles are like this. Tour de France bikes are like this. So we're going to have to do a little bit of switching up already. All right. So is anybody, if anybody in the chat, Chris, have you ever been to New York City? No. New York City? No. No, I have not. I, uh... Oh my gosh. Anonymous says I didn't do anything, so Rachel throws down. Well, as long as you as as long as whatever you did, you did it anonymously. Whew, it's a secret high five. Have I ever been to New York City? No. I have not been to most of anywhere. I uh I became uh Mr. Has to work too much at a young age. And um, with kids, so I didn't get a chance for much traveling. I travel all over Ontario. <laughs> Woo! You're the incels, but as a disabled man, I was. Drawing opinions about my romantic life. I hear you. Yeah, I don't... Because uh, I got married young, I, I did, I've never really got too much opportunity to go traveling to do too much. And it's largely just because uh, worky work, work, work. Kids, kids, kids. Now my kids are all grown up. And I got grandkids all the time. So, no, I don't. Uh, 
Okay. So I'm trying to figure out in advance. I got a little kid's bike. Little, little stereotypical bike for, uh, here, I'll show you. This is what I'm going to make everybody ride. Oh, no. Oh, no. He became a father instead of... No, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that uh, um, because I was... Uh, I didn't... You know, I started young and, and, and I had... Uh, I had kids when I was 12. Maybe not that young. And... Uh, not even close. Wrong decade. But... Um, yeah, I was just working a lot and doing uh, a lot of kid stuff because uh, I was uh, juggling working and raising kids. Okay, so we got to put a basket on the front of this sucker. Not an eraser in sight. Yeah, so what we got, you can't, if you're going to draw kids bikes... Don't you dare draw that bike without a little basket in the front of it. That's the whole point of existence, folks. Oh wait, wait, let's let's bend that bar. Anonymous went to New York once, went to Macy's, saw a show, Empire State Bank. You did the three. You did the three. Isn't that the three? You go to uh you go to uh, New York and you've got the three specific things you got to do. Unless you practice a lot, then you could have gotten a Carnegie Hall. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Streamers on the handlebars. Thank you. Thank you, Didi. We'll be doing that. Let's, uh, let's just get those happening now. I know this is a little ridiculous, but if anybody else wants to spill in ideas too, Jim's been in New York twice in 20 years. So you're pretty much an expert. <laughs> so when somebody says, like, let's say Jose says, you know, I'm from Yonkers. You can go Yonkers. Hey, you know, that guy in uh, named uh, Larry. <laughs> Did you know that Seinfeld takes place in New York? Seriously, oh, I knew that. Didi's been to the airport. Um, yeah, I just, I've never, I've never been there. Never once in, in my lifetime have I uh, been in the States. You guys are crazy, man. Don't tell me you're not. I see the kind of people you vote for. You got to get wise with that business, who you guys are voting for. You just do what we do in Canada. And just let somebody's son become the next prime minister. Oh, wait, you've done that. <laughs> the states did that first. Only this year is part of Seinfeld, Jim. Isn't Larry David in Los Angeles now? Got to give him his little clicky shoes. Yeah, see, we're going to have to put the... He's barely keeping his foot on. Okay. I was thinking of the triplets de Belleville. I don't know if anybody's had the opportunity to see that that animation, but really overly pronounced leg muscles there, so I had to rein it in. They also like cream cheese in New York City. <laughs> I saw the pier when Law and Order was filmed. Dun, dun. 
Being Cray helps to understand you for the most part. Thank you, Rachel. And okay, I like all these uh, really, really strong in-depth analysis uh, of, uh, of what makes New York what it is. Seinfeld. Law and order. <laughs> All right. Janice not here, so I'm not going to use a... What's it called? Stencil. You got to figure out how to do this little bike in uh, some degree of perspective. All right, there we go. We did it. We did it, everybody. Canadians usually vote in the polar opposite of who the Americans get, you know, so they can't get along. <laughs> say Cabrera has dual citizenship. Los Angeles and New York. Slightly different uh, cultural aesthetics, at least on TV, in uh, Los Angeles and uh, New York. New York has law and order. Los Angeles has LA law. No. All right. Oh, happy day. So I'm going to have his uh, water bottle bouncing around inside of here. We got to get his head down. It's really, he's really riding hard. This aerodynamic hat. Oh, sorry. I left that up there. And, uh oh. Rachel has exceeded her five-minute time limit for her three prompts. The three-prompt system, for anybody that doesn't know, Dee Dee Willingham on her stream, which will be on tomorrow morning, uh, has a bag. And inside that bag, she's taken lots of little pieces of paper, and she's written a word, a random word on each one. In the case that I got, it was the latest one is bike symbol T. And so she'll pull three things out of the bag for you. There you go. And once you've got those three prompts, go ahead and do a piece with those. I'm a lunatic that chooses to do a, 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 an entire comic page out of them and try to make some sort of narrative sense. Other people uh, have far more sense than I do. I don't do like a single illustration or something like that. Rachel does some really good ones, but she limits herself to five minutes every time. Today, she blew it. Those scales took hours. Triplets of Belleville, literally one of my all-time favorite movies. Hey, you want to borrow it? I own it. Love that film. All, Seinf all interiors of Seinfeld were shot in L.A. I didn't realize that uh, that, 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 that was the case. Biggie Smalls was also shot in L.A. <laughs> I'm going to put that on a shirt. Probably already done. New York City is rendered more realistically on TV. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are on fire today. So I'm trying to think of the stupidest hat that I can think of. And if anybody's a bicyclist and wears one of these hats, I mean, I'm sorry. being all rough and sloppy. Oh, sunglasses. The sunglasses keeps you anonymous. Just saying. 
or if you're like me, it makes you look like a mortician. So we got to put some uh, stickers and doodads and whatever else. He's got patches. Bicycle guys love patches. New York pizza is actually the greatest pizza on earth. I know. I've been there twice. I'm an expert, remember? Don't forget the bicycle clip on the chain side. Boink, boink. Boink, boink. Got it right there. That's a high, that's a high uh, stem in that bike for his seat. How do I draw these guys so they all look like they're all jacked up on roids? Tassels on a handlebar, got that, got the tassels. Oh, everybody's all about them tassels. Let's get another guy in here. Let's shake this up. I'm going to draw him a different color. Why? I have nothing for you. My daughter Denise has been there twice. She would agree with you on the pizza gym. She's also an expert. She's also an expert. But if we're looking for a big expert, on the pizza in Yonkers. Boy, are we in luck today. Jose Cabrera, could you weigh in on the pizza in Yonkers, New York? You need long, <laughs> you need long streamers if it's a girl's bike. Are you okay, happy Rachel? <laughs> All right. Yeah, look alike. Let's get uh, let's get this guy a little snark, Rachel. Judy, what do you got planned on your stream in the morning? Pizza has been banned in Yonkers. This just in. Thank you, Jose. You heard it from Jose, everybody. You keep your pizza out of New York. You keep it out of Yonkers, you hear me? Hey. No, no, you just found out, Rachel. He just he just told us. At the exact same time as you said that. So, anyways, this guy comes into town, you know, and he's got this whole box of pizza. I'm like, where do you think you are? This is Yonkers, pal. Trying to draw another stupid helmet. Uh, Diddy is going to be thinking of wax seals and organizing my zines in the box Janet Mamie. That's her show for tomorrow morning, folks. I think Frank's with his kids. Frank would love that. You're going to get a little pushing action going on in here. We're going to push each other off in the little bikes. Just trying to shake up their poses a little bit, separate him up. It will be riveting. Yes, Frank will like the wax seal part. Well, I don't know if he'll be able to see it because he's going to be with his kids, but he'll definitely watch the video. It will be recorded. Christopher, you lunatic.
So is that it? Is that is everybody weighed in on the cream cheese question? Hey, you came here for the excitement. I uh I I can't tell you the last time I ate cream cheese. I can't cuz I can't eat bagels. They're way too heavy for me. I got to I got to count the old carbs, you understand? Bagels. Goodbye. And it's a weird thing for a person like me, for their 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 partner to say, well, you can have half of one. I am a I am a large person. I don't want a half a bagel. Forget it. I'll just eat this stupid yellow thing. What is this called? Rice cake? Organizing zines is captivating. Yes, it is. Bagels transform it into sugar. Everything transforms into sugar, Jim. All happiness does. I'm still learning, right? I, I'm still still trying to figure everything out because uh, it's only been a year for me. So it's... Uh, Uh-oh, the dreaded circle of doom. That's not what I think of. I actually don't know what the hell that means. I don't know what I'm thinking of with a circle to do. And you're back. I need Paul when I make a statement like that. Yeah, I'm still figuring it out. And because I'm brittle, I'm brittle. Okay, I'm going to do something for myself here. It's, uh, there's a certain point where in the process of trying to keep track of the different, uh, the different, uh, characters here that are on the page, I'll do this sometimes is that I'll put a light sort of base value down on them just so that you can always go over this you can always cover it up put some other things on there so that as i'm drawing the other guy in behind him here now i don't have to sit here second guessing every three seconds about where's the the one in the foreground in comparison to the one in the background i don't know if anybody else does this nonsense but this is what this uh crazy old honky does oh uh, i'm missing stuff i'm sorry gang hey it's jane hi jane uh what am i missing glucose to be exact that's the glucose in the bagels yeah 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 still figuring it all out I became, uh, Jose, I tell everybody this, I don't care. I became a uh, type 1 diabetic a year and a half ago. I had a seizure and it shut down my my, uh, my, my, my business so that now I, uh, I got the issues with the insulins. So, still figuring it out. I know this. Uh, two liter of ice cream. No. That's pretty much it. What's where are we now? Okay. Oh, I think Jane's gonna uh, question of the day. Rachel's giving it to Jane. Cre Jane, cream cheese, yay or nay, and preferences. Uh. It's Jose from Yonkers, Jane, or, or L.A., <laughs> depending on the day. Okay, Jane's 
Jane, Jane's throwing in here. She says, cream cheese? Yep. Unwarm bagels. Jose says, me too. Is that the bagels or is... Oh, you're type two. Hey, cool. That sucks. But, you know, cool. You're going to grow with a mustache? I hear it's a prerequisite these days. I want to grow me a big old Wilford Brimley mustache. You can't eat too much bagel anymore. Your tummy hurts. Understandable. I stopped eating sugar except for on Saturdays. When I do have it now, I feel horrible. I've cursed myself. Way to go, Jim. There's so many things in the world that are sugar-free. But I'll tell you this much. If you got, if you know anybody in your world that's vegan, that's like, oh, well, there's a whole bunch of vegan recipes for 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 diabetics. You tell your you tell that person to go home. So you get out of my house. I don't want meat, nothing but meat. All right, so here's our uh, here's our guy. Just lightly uh, lightly washed in. Clean that up after, but now I know where he is. And in support of diversity, I'm going to color this guy green. All right. If I do this today, that means I'm going to have to ask Didi tomorrow for three more prompts. It's going to sound like I'm greedy. Does anybody, has anybody talked to Raul? Raul is working on a six prompt page. That's a lot. Hey, how you doing, Tori? All the good stuff was at the start. Just been downhill from there. So this is what I'm talking about when I when I talk about when you put these different values over top and you have this sort of modified surface underneath and you can see those other values peeking through. It starts to become really fun. Mushroom start there. I love getting older. Body parts change, ailments assail us, and every time I go to tea doctor, he says, Well, at your affe. She's out of control. Uh oh. I let that go. I'll get back to that in a second. All right, what are we at? Now we're eight. Mm, what are your guys' thoughts on sugar, substitute, natural, and man-made? Uh, whenever I see any sugar around me, I run up to it and I shove as much of it as I possibly can in my mouth. And then I just jam the insulin. No. Um, uh, my wife has started baking for me with substitute sugars, and which is so great because it's like oh i can have some of these things but then comes the double-edged sword is that now there's a pile of bacon on the table which i know that i'm allowed to eat now however that's just the sugar part of it you know because we we got the card part too right and that that's the stuff that so it gets me every time uh-oh rachel and them typos uh, I will not use sugar substitutes, just less sugar. Tori, the question of the day, cream cheese, yay or nay, and how? Well, how? Preferences, maybe not how. <laughs> cream cheese with everything. Okay, they made a movie about that, Tori. That's heavy. That's a dangerous thing. Everything, that's a lot. That's a lot. Don't do sugar. Don't do tea. 
Carbs turn into sugar. They sure do. I'm not a doctor. I just play one on the internet. <laughs> I, uh, I like when there's a funny thing when people that when people write scripts okay now I've done a, a couple of projects in the film industry now and so I've, I've I've had to do a little bit of storyboarding on some scripts and when people do scripts that specifically uh, pertain to an industry or um, medicine right? Science. In the case for me, it was science. The science was so bad on the, on, in this, um, uh, the sci-fi project that I was asked, asked to do some storyboarding for the science was so nonsensical. It's not even leap of logic stuff. We're talking about just absurdism. And, uh, I'm not going to get into the specifics of it because, you know, I got a, I got the hush hush order. And, um, it's just sometimes non-scientists need to talk to scientists when they're writing science stuff for their stories. Just, just to ask. Dr. Kildare, I always love that name. I love Dr. Chapago. Defo Bagel. So, uh, hey, Jose, thanks for hanging out, man. Been fun. Yeah, um, if you're, if you're, not a scientist and you're writing something that is firmly rooted in science talk to somebody that knows something about science just just ask them that question how, how ridiculous is this idea i know i can write it but does it make any sense to write it yeah it's it wasn't even uh, okay so there was one show all right and it ends with the alien race home planet. This isn't the, the one I worked on because I can't I can't talk about it. But um, there's one show I watched where it's an entire season. In the last episode of the season, you find out the entire plot of the bad guys running around trying to set up machines all over the place. Um, is it because they're here from their home planet and their home planet is dying, and so there's such an abundance of space and life on earth and because they're just like us except for they live twice as long as us uh they need to bring they need to save their race and so rather than figuring out of uh, ways of getting the race to earth and setting up shop here they bring the planet they bring the they literally use all these machines to bring the planet and it's not a geosynchronous order or, or orbit anything like that it's not uh, any kind of Alternate, alternating orbit where the two planets are spinning in spiral with one another around the sun, anything that might have anything to do with the fundamentals of physics. They literally, in the graphics for the show, move that planet within the distance between the Earth and the moon. And when that planet shows up in the sky and all the characters are looking up in the sky going, where did it come from? And then it goes to a close, like tune in next season and find out. Even even my sons, uh, my two oldest sons were in their teens at the time. And my one son fell off the couch and was laughing his guts out because he just found out in physics about tidal waves and things like that. And how the moon's orbit around the earth uh, allows the this movement in the, in, the, in the world itself. And that's the tides come in, tides come out. It's a ball about gravity and the push and pull of it. But as soon as that planet fell in between earth and the moon we just all blow up we we just don't it's just it, it, yeah they'll rip each other apart so there's that's what's going to happen in season two it's just death and destruction so yeah uh just because you can draw it it doesn't mean it exists oh no i can draw some weird stuff but it exists on the page uh was that on recently and was the planet square no <laughs> No, this is a ten-year-old show. Um, my one of my sons, we bought the uh, the DVD set for like five dollars at a antique market, and he's never going to get rid of it. He's always going to keep it because it's the worst television show he's ever seen. Uh, if you can't question it, it's not science. Hey, listen, people need to stop be questioning my friends in the flat Earth Society. Okay, that's science. 
That's real science there, folks. What channel in time? Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll find out from Sean which the show is so that uh, I can't remember it. Of course, I'll find out what the show is so that I can tell everybody, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. That way, everybody can get a look at it and go, "What in the world?" Yeah. All right, so I'm going to draw some more of these guys. So the three words, the three prompts, because it's quarter after one already, and I'm blabbing away. Bike symbol T. So. So my theory is to have all of these um, these bicyclists riding around on, well, they're bicycles in this race. I'm going to pull that tire around there. And they stop to have some hot tea. That's my, that's my shtick. That's, that's, that sounds good. And when they stop to have some hot tea, it's hot tea, so they get burned. So they're going to have some cold tea. That's as far as I've got. How it fits the symbol in, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm really going to make the the symbols, or the, I'm sorry, the streamers really overpronounced. Intensity, that's what that is. Yeah, when you catch a really good show, when you catch a really crazy show that has uh, some some just some outlandish stuff on it, it's the kind of thing that I, I find that sticks in your brain more than you know the the shows with the really refined writing and 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 like um, Lost. Lost is garbage, right? Like that show, the the, the ending of that show was just kind of like a you know kind of an ending and but you know you don't even remember some of the seasons in the middle of that thing just because it's there's a circus at one point and it gets so convoluted how else would you declare the winner without symbols in a big band <laughs> i watched a video this morning of a band of uh, a, a brass band and they're hanging out in the park and they're chasing joggers as they run by and they're playing um david foster's the chariots of fire <laughs> as they're trying <laughs> and those poor people you're gonna love it all right so i'll get the this a little more a little more densely populated get these guys in here get them all whipping around in a circle and then uh, we'll have them stop for tea next and have sup a little bit to tea. Janet Nash's uh, stream. She always stops to have a, a cup of tea, and uh, I've watched I've watched it a few times, and every time she stops to have a cup of tea, I find myself I have to have a drink too. I don't know why. Yeah, it's uh, it was so good. This this video was so good that. Uh, <laughs> and it's like running behind the guy and the, the, the jogger some of them look really mad others of them are they, they're, they're trying to jog and run at the same time or they're trying to jog and laugh at the same time it's fantastic all right so there's there's our initial i'm gonna move that wheel down or else she's hopping up in the air we'll figure it out yeah so anyhow, uh, what are we at? 20 after 1. So we got this for the... And I got another suggestion in today from uh, our new friend, Jose. Of, it's a long one. A virtual phlegm ball that lost its way to reality and forgot its lunch money. Yep. But we've we've been catching up on everything else. The scratch and sniff one was uh, the last one on that that page that it was on. So, you know that scratch and sniff one. So we're getting there. It's more like it. I'm 
trying to fit these large legs onto a, a small bike is kind of silly. Yeah, loss was kind of disappointing. Um, the best the best show that I've ever seen that not only does it not miss a beat, that there's no tonal variation from season to season. It's literally just like a continuous three season long uninterrupted show. It's German and it's called Dark. D-A-R-K. And it's on the flicks that are in a net. And uh, so good. And then the people that made it just made a second show on uh, Netflix. And uh, 1899 it was called. And it was okay. It was okay. They got canceled after the first season. But the, the, the show actually... They resolve at the end of the first season. You can literally leave the show right there. They don't. They don't need any more seasons. Like it has a resolve, but that resolve presents well. What happens next, right? But uh, I need to work on my Obi Wan Ken Obi for May the fourth. Okay, here's what'll help. Here's what'll help. Okay, there's a band called Sibo Mato. Right. Um, and you want to listen to the song by them called Sai Fi Wasabi. Mm -hmm. Sai Fi, oh, is it on the screen? No. Sibo Mato. Sai Fi Wasabi. It's a Japanese band. And uh, it's got the two girls that are the leads in it. And they rap. Uh, they're not English language first speaking their english a second language and when they were learning english they were learning Eng english by reading packaging so their their raps are ridiculous but they rap things like obi-wan kenobi told me in the robbie <laughs> it's wonderful um yeah check it out it's it's you'll laugh your guts out it's good fun good silly fun but it's not it's, i don't expect you to be like i'm gonna go buy it, that album that there's the best music i ever done heard so oh you're gonna do obi-wan and barbie well it's inspiration Didi. it's just inspiration music you've got to do an obi-wan photography session with uh, with your barbie dolls do i how fast how long is it going to take me to make you an Obi-Wan man card and mail it to you. <laughs> Hello there. All right. So there's that. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I got a, where are we at? 123. So anyways, the, the stamp think the stamp package that I got today, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. That's uh, super fun for me. I'm, I'm really looking forward to incorporating those in, uh, in some pages. I'm going to be uh, inserting some of that information that's uh, in those stamps, like some of those nice little details and background patterns and stuff like that. Blend them all in. Uh, at you and also with you. I don't know if I can mail you something fast enough. Oh, the kids are going to love theirs, but I'm going to let them open them themselves because they're, uh, you know, they earned it. Uh, Lily was already talking, my, my oldest grandchild was already talking about, uh, if anything looks like cool little posters, we can make posters from Adele Hills. I'm like, all right, you got that plan before they're even here. So yeah, they're they're looking forward to it. Uh, well, Jay's a nine, ten year old kid, so you say you're gonna get some stamps back. Why? But you know, because you give other people stamps. Okay. <laughs> you're exiting, but have a good one. Not leaving. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, I think I got to sign off, folks. I got uh, something that's come up that I got to, uh, I have to address. Um, this has been a lot of fun. 
this has been a good day and uh i'm i'm i really like any opportunity i have to go weird and crazy like this hey you know what people could give me some feedback on this i don't know how weird and 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 odd it is to people that i do this strange stuff on the surface and what you think of that i've uh, i've never really uh, asked anybody for feedback on that before so if you want to put that in the uh, comments for the video or on social media or whatever that uh, that's the kind of thunking that helps this guy who uh, overthunks everything so but in the meantime i uh, i'm gonna sign off and uh, and go and deal some deal with some stuff i hope everybody has a good day i hope uh, you get uh, crack lacking on creating stuff and uh, i really want to see what it is i really look forward to seeing that too it's really fun i really i really feel fortunate to to be able to engage with everybody here and uh i like the sense of community that everybody has here so awesome uh and let me know if uh if i'm not uh i think i got everybody that i'm following that's on here but if i don't send me your 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 links so that uh, i can get your posts and see what you what you're up to because uh I just love art. I love creativity. Uh, thank you to all my sponsors. And uh, oh, there it came. Only one can Barbie. <laughs> so I, I used to manage a store. And we had Obi-Wan Darth Vader, Obi-Wan Luke, Obi-Wan uh, Ken Barbie. We had uh, C-3PO and R2. We had... Uh, uh, Maul, Darth Maul, Princess Leia, and they were all Barbie versions. They weren't all the 11-inch tall doll series that has come out from Sideshow Toys, or Hot Toys, it's called. There's 350 of those, literally 350 different ones, but there are that many different version, different Barbie versions of Star Wars characters made. Amidala has at least six different ones, right? So it's... Uh, and. Um, Leia has a bunch of different ones too. So, yeah, Obi Wan Ken Barbie. <laughs> All right, gang, I'm going to take off. I got to go do some stuff. Thanks very much, everybody, for joining in. Uh, I look forward to seeing what you're working on. In the meantime, I'll be back tomorrow at two o'clock with this finished page. And, uh, and we're on to the next one. Thanks very much, everybody, for, uh, for all the support. Bye for now.